Now everyone knows that single moment in World of Tanks where you are in a great situation, but sadly enough, World of Tanks itself decides that you are simply not allowed to win. What is that? What is that? But we are not deterred by a fat loss. Hello everyone, my name is Eminem, and welcome back to World of Shockingly Unknown Tank Destroyers. Now you've seen the intro, it was an SU-101. You have seen a very, very shortened version of the first game, which was an SU-101. And what you're seeing now is the backside of an SU-101. And you probably know that the SU-100M1 is not a popular tank, even within YouTubers. Well, the Mighty Jingles did a patch review of it on the patch 8.0 when it came out three years ago. Sir Fosh made a review about it two years ago. Aging Jedi made a review of it two years ago. Quickie Baby never made a review about it, doesn't even have gameplay of it on his channel. And you know why? Because this tank isn't special, no one plays it, it's not a good tank, it doesn't stand out at anything. But what if I tell you this tank is not even that bad? It has a top speed of 50 km an hour, for some reason the Russians or the Soviets back in the days decided to put a vodka infused super engine into this tank, gave it basically your box standard 100mm Soviet gun that has 3k dpm, a 1.6 second aim time, and 0.31 dispersion. But apart from the gun, what does it have? Well, it has decent armor. 90 millimeters on the hull sloped back at quite a bit. People are confused about it when they see it. If it is in the front, because they don't... People never play this tank, so you as a player, if you come across and fire at the front, you're just like, why did it bounce? I've had, before I had this tank, a lot of times where I thought, where do I even shoot this tank? Because I, I don't know where to pen it, because I never see it. Well, you know, it's a tank destroyer. What do you do? You track it and get around it. This tank has no gun traverse whatsoever. 8 degrees to the left, 8 degrees to the right. That is a paltry amount of gun traverse. And it has almost no gun depression. 4 degrees of gun depression because the gun is mounted in the back. I don't know if it was historically accurate what Wargaming did to this tank, or it was actually designed to have a vodka infused super engine. But it is fast, with basically 18.5 power to rate ratio, it reaches that top speed of 50 km an hour on the flat. And that is pretty darn good, because with this tank, you can actually flank around. It is not a campy TD, in my opinion. It is an assault TD. You get into the people's faces, you get around them, you surprise them with the fact that there's suddenly a 3000 DPM tank destroyer next to them. And that is the last thing that people expect of this tank destroyer, to suddenly be next to them, and putting shot after shot after shot into their side, and then the damage starts to rack up quite fast. So then why is this tank not that popular? Multiple reasons. First of all, this toilet and the super toilet, the SU-101, are considered bad tanks. The SU-12255 is a good tank, but the reward is just not as popular after the SU-12255. The Object 263, it is a very low silhouette tank with a 550 alpha gun, but it's open topped, but the front is really armored, except for the gun mounted, which is its weak spot. The line is just not popular because in the other line you have the ISU, the, the Doom Cannon as Jingles loves to name it, and it's just been popularized by Jingles as well. And then as a reward, after the ISU, you get the Object 704, which is a upgraded version of the ISU, and then you get the 268. Now, the 268 is not considered a reward for grinding the 704, because it's 300,000 experience. But what the difference is between the two lines is the ISU and the 704 and the 268 get 750 alpha troll cannons. The SU-100M1, the SU-101, the SU-12254 and the Object 263 all have different kind of alpha guns. It's a completely different line. You don't just sit in the back and just completely shit on people. No, you have to use DPM. You have to think more tactically. The one line that ends with the 268 
is the slow campy line. You sit in the back, you fire your gun, you wait about 15 seconds, then you pop back out again, fire your gun, wait 15 seconds. The 263 line, the one with the different kinds of DPM, relies on its speed. It is a assault line, more like it, than a campy TD line. It is different. I am grinding this line. I started last year after the um, Operation Black Gold campaign. And I had to get the 263 because we needed more specialist tank destroyers. Now, John got the T110 E3 after painfully grinding the T95, and I decided to go for the 263. Well, I am still on the SU-101 because I did not look forward to playing this particular tank. But after playing it more and more and more and finally getting used to its playstyle, it is not actually a bad tank. You just have to get used to it. It's, it's not like the Chiri, which is just a huge tank with no armor and a bit, let's just say, a really underwhelming gun. The SU-101, it is fast. It has DPM. It has relatively good armor from the front or from a distance. However, its traverse speed is, is reasonable, but its gun elevation is okay. Gun dispersion is meh. Its gun depression is bad. Just its gun is limited in the amount of movement, but when you start to pump out your shots, that is where the SU-101 will shine. And if you don't believe me about the armor part of the SU-101, look at this. Yes. That bishop fired premium AP at me. Now, the bishop was using a smaller gun than the usual. The normal gun only uses high explosive. It was using a 25-pounder gun howitzer that can fire high explosive, premium AP, and normal AP, I think. I'm not quite sure. And firing AP, this bishop had no chance of penning me because its premium or its better AP rounds have 92 millimeters of penetration. My tank, frontally angled, has more than 100 to 120 millimeters of effective armor. So when I say that this tank has good DPM, I mean it has good DPM. It is 6th of all the tier 7 tanks. Behind the ISU-122S, the SU-152 with the 122mm gun, the SU-122-44, the Tiger, the E-25, and then the SU-101. But what the SU-101 over the other Russian TD has is a really, really good aim time. And not to forget dispersion. This tank, 0.31, is 0.1 better than all the other Russian TDs. Now, would I recommend this tank? Hell no. It's bad. If you don't know how to play this tank, it is really bad. It is only good in tier 6 and 7 matches. Basically, if it's top tier, it's great. If it sees tier 8, well... You cannot be as aggressive because tier 8 don't give a flying monkey about your armor. If it sees tier 9, well, you're basically useless. And did you notice that this AMX-12T was crying help the whole game? He was on his side for a very, very large part of the game. And I see that he's on his side, I can help him. I don't want to go 1v1 against this Crumble Berlin because he has shown me that he can circle me. And if I can get this AMX-12T back on his feet... I can basically follow him, because that Chrome Oberlin is not going to be defending his base, because otherwise he would have been spotted by now. No, he's probably going to try and go to our base and see what he can do there. Now, I help the amx 12 t back on his feet, and I'm basically going to my own base, where we spot the Chrome Oberlin, and he is above me. Now, with this amx 12 t next to me, that Chrome Oberlin is not going to rush me, because I've, it's 2v1, it would be stupid for him to rush against an autoloader. And this TD. Now, if I was alone, he would have probably waited till I was close to distance, then he would have circled me. Instead, he rushes out and dies. 